Uh, uh, oh, oh, we're better. That wasn't so bad at all. We're all dead. It was very tragic. Wait, where's Mandel brought? Uh. We never took him down with us. He's up there patrolling. Why the hell not? You know, why the hell not? It's a good question. It's almost like... Except it's not, you know, pyramid goal. You're not very good at geometry, Red. No, I'm not. We've established this. Well, we're stuck. Maybe we should have brought rope. Why didn't we bring rope? Well, there's always a thing I always suggest, and that's pray to Nephthys. You know, that's kind of a wild-ass guess, just betting that there's a mechanism involved, but sure, why not? Well, haven't you ever played Zelda? Maybe you should light all the... Oh. We didn't... We were just going to stand in there. And yeah, it's, that was it kind of catches you there. All right, well, let's, let's review the situation. Hallway there. Hallway there. Hallway there. Okay. Let's look at things. I like that nobody else is actually looking around for anything. They're just kind of they're waiting for you. Well, we are the super diver. They did do that. Yeah. There's something about the sun on every ancient thing. I don't remember that. What do I think? Only I think we, we had something that could play music. So it's basically an ancient underwater theremin. I guess. <laughs> but nothing happened. Of course. <laughs> we, we need Japanese support here. Oh. Well. Oh. Maybe she saw some ice she liked. Maybe Nephthys took her. Maybe she took my advice. Maybe it was ghosts. That's silly. The ghosts only appear if Sonic's been through here already. All right, Gigi. Sure, nothing will go wrong. Leaving you here. Why did we split up again? It seemed like a good idea at the time. Just not really. To who? But Gigi just wanted some time alone with the mural, and his chisel. Yeah. And it's... his bag. Yeah. Come back, it's half gone. He's like, what? No, it's not oh. gold, right? Here's something that glitters. These own. It's a tasseled wobbagong. I love wobbagongs. I really like them too. He's on top of something, but. Well, yeah, but. And Marine Beta. He's pretty neat. That eye spot Are... on their fin, they'll basically hang around rocks and let that hang out. They'll look like more at you. Are they out. actually related to, like, the uh, betas that people keep as pets? I don't. No. Hmm. Thought asking that question. Usually we're the ones answering those questions. Eh, I just... Taxonomy's eh. weird, as you know. Yeah, it is. Let's play Wibblegons are really world. cool. They're basically bearded sharks. Is yeah. there a bearded shark? I bet there's a bearded shark. But the shark. Wobbegong is a bearded shark, but those are all Well, I you. know. I was like, is there an actual bearded shark? 
Well, you know how common names work. If I say something's a bearded shark, it's a bearded shark. Yeah, I, I bet there is one out there. That's I bet it's a just... common name for the Wabagong. Could be. Could be. That, that seemed like a thing that it would exist. I've gone to Google and searched for bearded shark. And I also got the Wabagong for that. So, yes, mystery Thanks, solved. Thanks, Google. <laughs> what did we find? An orb? Yeah, some sort of orb. Okay. Orbical. This is definitely like Zelda, though. Oh. What are you doing in here, sunfish? In the Say dark? Say look, this. And that she's behind it. Could be. Also, no, they're not related. I have to oh. up. Okay. <laughs> Answered my own question slowly. But yeah, oh my god, we found the purple tag, too! Yeah. I'm Nephthys, mother of Anubis. It's kind of neat. Doesn't really look like Nephthys. No. It looks like a man, to be honest. Yeah. But again, they did kind of go for that gender neutral ish. Yeah, but even thing. then it's Let's play the flute. What could go wrong? Just, just play it completely indiscriminately. I should have suspected this would happen. You did suspect it would happen. I know. We even talked about it. It's great. Congratulations, Professor. Is it more likely you're just opening a door and the rush of water coming through is just pulling them out? It's similar to how most fish actually eat, because they open their mouths and it just sucks the food in. Well, now, now you're just making me think there's a giant fish that's opening its mouth in response to us playing this song and just eating everybody. Just like in Mario Brothers 3! No, oh, no, those sh shoot out small fish. Not the ones in 3 3 and 3 8. <laughs> I love that you know exactly which stages have the ones. The level zone. Wait, hey. hey. Hey, cleaner Rass, how you doing? He's cleaning, let him go to his work. Clean the hell out of that sunfish. That sunfish can be pure as hell. It's weird there's a sunfish with Nephthys. It's weird there's a sunfish this far from the sun. Not really. Our visitors to the abyss. They did really go out of their way to make this place look nice in terms of detail. Yeah. Those are some nice looking murals. I'm pretty sure they're just the same one over and over. Though. It is, but it's still a nice looking mural. They, they just, you know, the textures in this game look very nice. Yeah. I had to come back. To this Wobbegong. Yeah, because you didn't. Yeah. Some nice TLC. So cool. If you were to, unfortunately, step on it, it would bite the piss out of you, as would I if you stepped on me. It's true. So, it's, that's kind of like a general fact. Most things tend to bite you if you step on them. Yes, you're just more likely to, you know, possibly step on one. I mean, I'm pretty sure a rhino, if you stepped on it, would definitely bite you, then horn you. Well, the Asian ones definitely would. They, they prefer to bite. Yeah. Which might be why they're almost extinct. Eh, could also just be nature of their habitats as well. Yeah. Well, let's try the other hole door. The other hole door, huh? Let's try the other mule deer. Let's try the other passageway. Well, they really had only one way they could have gone, so I'm guessing it's this way. Statistically speaking. I'm telling you, Nephthys. I'm I'm not willing to resort to such theories, Red. We're, we're looking for scientific answers, like aliens and ghosts. 
I didn't know that this wasn't an ancient alien. Oh. Oh. Ten little snailfish. Snailfish are weird. I bet they're still gross looking. You know, like the picture you put up last time. I mean the picture I'm putting up right now. Yes. Like an animate tongue. Did they expect people to come underwater for this thing? Did they build this place for that purpose? What is the reasoning for this engineering? I've got many questions for these dead peoples. They're literally called the Okeanities. Yeah, but I've got questions for them, and they're dead. Yeah. Look, you didn't miss this one this time. Hey, no. Possibly because I was shouting at you, they're on the walls when you were recording this. Yeah. Horseshoe crab, come on. Work with me here. There you go. So, for those that don't remember from last time, horseshoe crabs, they, they got some pretty good blood on them. Blue blood. Good blood. Used for stuff. Mm-hmm. Oh, Osiris, great. Maybe Osiris took them. That would be another thing that could have happened. Atlantic Tarpon, why are you here? We're in the Red Sea. Meanwhile, this ribbon fish are having a good time. Look at him. Do a little dance. Tarpon wants some. I do enjoy that it eats even like normal. They don't change their orientation. They keep floating upwards. It's like, yeah, well, that's I approve, ribbon fish. I approve. Oh, it's Osiris. Wait a minute. Could there be a mechanism here too? Yeah, we'll just play the flute. Why the hell not? Why is Osiris holding that staff? That's Neftis' staff. Hmm. Whee! Uh, yeah. That was Oceana, right? Yes. Oh, Oceana, I hope you just saw a mouse. A sea mouse. Well, John, Eric, I got everybody killed. With my, our flagrant use of the flute. You had a good record going. Happens at every one of your jobs. Maybe we shouldn't have just used the flute everywhere without thinking. I like that Maybe. the ribbon fish were unaffected. Well, was, no, she was out in the hallway waiting for was us. Was she? I don't know why. She she just was. Maybe that's why there's no fish in the hallway. Could be. Except for the wubagong and the snailfish. Well, they're out in the they're in a corridor. They're not in the hallway itself. Yeah, they're in the corners. When you do eventually come back here, there are things in the hallway, though. Ooh. Magical things. Things you like. Ah, I do like things. And then suddenly, current. Yes. Sort of things you'd think would live in a hallway. Floor masters? Yes. Very good. Hey, everybody's still alive. Good job. Good job staying alive, everybody. Hoo-ah. It was great. I don't know, flutes. The ancient Egyptians were known for their complicated flute-based uh, water puzzles. It was it one happens. of their greatest works, you know. <laughs> this is the true riddle of the Sphinx. This looks like another big room with another big statue, Asian sheep's head rass. Oh, Horus. Walter Horus, screw that, I have to go look at this sheep's head rass. Love oh, these guys. I hope you can see his face. I love their goofy face. Come here! Oh! Yeah. I imagine he sounds like that. Yeah. I am sheep's head rice. Hey, ribbon fish. Or uh, spade fish. Yeah, those are called spade fish. Yeah. Okay, so that's supposed to be Horus, right? Yeah. But he's got Osiris's 
Yes. Thing. No, that's an Ankh. Never mind. I thought it was his the crooks that Osiris has. I think well, they I just. Play... Yeah, I don't think they gave a shit. I play the dragon the flea randomly. I'm doing that all the time. It's got it hasn't gotten us in trouble at all. Why not? Maybe we'll be sucked into another room. That'd be great. Oh, now we just, we just shut it all down. Yay! Thanks, Horus. Let's regroup. Okay, what went wrong with this plan, everybody? Uh, you waved a thing in front of Osiris and Nephthys' face. Which is something I guess you want to do if you want to wave something in the face of the god of the afterlife and the goddess of the death. Yeah, but I didn't know what the Egypt ancient Egyptian gods thought about dragons. I mean, how was I supposed to know they'd get... You're just lucky you found more about that. I guess. Sorry, Grandpa. We taunted the death goddess. At least that asshole set's not here. His nonsensical face. Hey, let's... Let's be careful what we say. We don't want to ask for trouble here. Underwater. An ancient temple. You're fine. This is Poseidon's domain. Honestly, I could I could not tell you who the Egyptian god of the sea is. Frankly, I'm not too familiar with Egyptian history in a general sense, in terms of its foundation. Perhaps our friend Giop could tell us something? So, when I say ancient Egypt, what comes to mind? Well, first thing you probably thought of were pharaohs, right? Pyramids, yada yada. Well, this, that stint of Egypt's history is, co covers the time of 3000 to 332 BC. In the end, they were overtaken by the Persian Empire, and eventually Alexander the Great swooped on through. This shuffled the culture along to the classical antiquity, and that continues down a semi-familiar territory. But what about before ancient Egypt? No. Let's start way, way back in the past. An ice age was at its peak roughly 30,000 years ago. Huge, huge glacial mountains covered Ethiopia, Kenya, and Uganda. Now, being near the equator, it was um, a pretty okay spot for humans to try and weather through the cold. Unfortunately, 12,000 years ago, the this, that was when the glaciers started to melt, and it led to almost endless floods, washes, and so forth, and these were particularly rough on the northern face of this mountain. Now, this went onward into the Nile River. Primitive structures that were in the area built by humans at the time, they couldn't stand a chance from these floods. I mean, you had sediment also pouring in with this, and it was just covering everything. Humanity as a whole had to back away while this event went on, and this whole ongoing issue with the, the Nile just flooding like crazy was called the Wild Nile. Now, people in the area were used to a much more calm Nile flow, but now it was incredibly inhospitable. Moving away from the river, however, wasn't an option for humans in the area. Thing is, um, the Ice Age ended, and, well, didn't technically end, because we're still in Ice Age right now, technically, but anyways, the precipitation had started picking up heavily on the eastern coast of Africa, near the coast. Now, along the Nile, the monsoon belt, typically associated with the area, actually crept northward as the weather changed, meaning that this whole region as a whole got almost no precipitation of any sort. It was just absolutely, completely, 100% bone dry if you got away from the river. The thing is, the river itself was such a mess that you couldn't settle anywhere near it. Now, how's about a little bit of hydrology? All right, well, picture this. The Nile is restored by glacial melt, right? But the grain sorting and erosion near the upper Nile is rather crazy. Between a, an explosion of plant growth, a higher tree line, higher temperatures, and more resistance to colder weather, this stretch of the river got pounded and caked by sediment, and it held onto it. Now, the water, however, it had to go somewhere. 
It was a lot of water. And as it went northward toward the lower Nile, however, there was uh, there was very little sediment actually remaining in the flow. Now this caused something referred to as downcutting, meaning that the current dug a sharp canal, so to speak. In a case where more sediment existed, it would have been more of a sloping surface and very wide or broad, but this could be envisioned as almost like taking a high-pressure hose and shooting it up against a mound of loose sand. As opposed to a gentle riverbed, you have a sharp path for the water, meaning that it was incredibly susceptible to flooding. To make the danger of flooding even worse, heavily downcut rivers have a much stronger and faster current. Getting caught in it was very dangerous and crossing it was no laughing matter. Also, riverbeds fitting these traits had very high levels of lateral erosion, which basically refers to the river eating away at the shores and expanding itself. Now, between this and flooding, settlements near the banks, um, they weren't a good idea. Agriculture was also a very risky proposition between the weather and just, you know, what you could call agricultural technology at the time. As a brief aside, the nature of the Nile is kind of confusing to me at this point, honestly. I mean, there's mention of the downcutting and a strong current, but we're, you know, we're hardly at a super high elevation sort of location. What I mean is, the Nile for the most part it flows through lowland terrain, meaning that the downcutting would hit its base level easily. In cases like this, bodies of water and downcutting are wider and calmer by nature. A super crazy V-shaped gouge would be more characteristic of higher elevation or mountainous settings. And I just kind of find it strange that they mention everything mentions this current being so crazy, but it doesn't really fit what I usually read about in downcutting. But Maybe the large amount of wash made this a special case, I, I'm not sure, but um, I'm kind of getting off track. The back, back on the topic, the Niles banks were inhospitable, meaning that in order to get away from the flooding, settlers in the area had to move outward into the desert, which wasn't exactly chock full of sunshine and gumdrops. Basically, they were boned. Across this stretch, in fact, there were at least four or five groups of people that just fizzled out. I mean, you had the Afian, the Isnan, the Kadan, the Sibelian, to name just a few. And in the upper Egypt area, large stores of smoked and preserved fish were found near where the Nile was less susceptible to the crazy flooding. But elsewhere, further out into the desert and such, large graves, damaged bones, and many weapons were found, seeming to indicate that Food grew scarce, and people probably turned to violence in order to survive. Needless to say, it, uh, it really wasn't a fun time or place to be alive. People in the area faded away and went off to search for greener pastures, quite literally, in fact. Aside from uh, a few minor settlements, this area was almost inhospitable from 10,000 BC to 6,000 BC. There was like literally 4,000 years where you could not find anyone around here just due to how harsh of an environment it was. Now, right around 6000 BC, all of a sudden, people start popping up all over the place. Possibly due to rainfall normalizing, maybe. Now, a sudden influx of agricultural goods and techniques seems to indicate that people migrated either from the Levant or further to the northeast, from the Fertile Crescent. Interestingly enough, the innovations in various ways of life found within these civilizations seems to hint that they didn't all come from one place. You know, possibly they were like from a melting pot background of sorts. Eventually, two major settlements formed, one near the Nile Delta and the other in Upper Egypt, near modern-day Kina. As time passed, civilizations overlapped, and you kind of ended up with an upper and lower Nile pair of civilizations. Now, these civilizations kind of sprinkled all over the area, and chief among them at first were the Fayum, the Badarians, and the Tazians. Finally, right around 4400 BC, at the tail end of these uh, civilizations, we reach a trio of cultures. 
However, it probably more probably more accurate to say that these are three different settlement sites from the same culture. Now, this a lot of people say that this is actually the evolution of the same culture, and they just named them based upon the sites they were find, found at. Now, the first of these three is known as the Ambracian culture, and it stands out due to a feature in its pottery. And up to this point, black top pottery was common. However, the Ambracians began developing pottery with slightly different patterns and colors and materials, and due to trace minerals found in some of these, it's theorized that they have, must have undergone some extensive trade with Nubia, Sinai, and other regions. By 3500 BC, they were replaced by the Gerzean culture. Pottery from these guys eventually grew far more sophisticated, and once met with drought along the Nile, the Gerzeans actually fell back on agriculture almost exclusively and actually flourished. Although the Gerzeans were still Amratian at their core, they also exhibited a lot of influence from Mesopotamians, as evidenced in various tools, relief work, and pottery. Now finally, by 3200 BC, we arrive at Dynasty Zero, which is known as Nakada III. The Amratian and Gerzean cultures are labeled by some as Nakada I and Nakada II, respectively, since they were preceding phases of the same culture. Nakata III is seen as the proto-dynastic era, as it is set in motion what would eventually become the Egyptian culture and the ongoing Egyptian dynasties. Now, what, why, what was so important about Nakata III? Well, firstly, hieroglyphics were established and adopted by society. In addition to this, political structures began to form and take hold within the now unified countryside. Plus, Nakata III made use of sail navigation and practiced regular burial rituals for their royalty. And speaking of royalty, they began using sereks, which were insignias of sorts to indicate status. Think of it as a symbol of the pharaoh, essentially. As for the two civilizations I mentioned earlier on the Delta and Upper Egypt, it's believed that these lower and upper sections of Egypt were unified, and that unification is what brought the end of the proto-dynastic era. It is actually believed they were uni unified by someone named Narmer, who was the final ruler of the proto-dynastic era, and by proxy, the first ruler of ancient Egypt proper. But that said, there's some debate over this. Narmer's relief is associated with artwork commemorating the unification of Egypt, but there is a, some discussion as to whether his predecessor, Ka, was responsible and Narmer rode on his coattails. Alternatively, people wonder if Narmer's contributions bore fruit after his death, hence all the things commemorating him. Now, another theory is that he lived and went onward and he he was served as a pharaoh who's known in some places as Menes, but you know there's some historians who think that this early pharaoh known as Menes was actually Hor Aha, Narmer's son, but the unfortunate thing is, from how long ago this was, it's just, there's a lot of uncertainty and certain details, and some things are just, you know, ultimately lost to time. And unfortunately, at this point, there are just some things about it we'll likely never know. Alright, let's review. Professor Sakurai, can you please read this thing for us? We can't do shit. We figured. Okay, apparently Nephthys is the goddess of rivers, so... There you go. And then you got Sobek, who's the Nile River. My descendants must pass through the underworld and reach the hallowed realm to find the treasure.
Only so, the holy yeah. metal of magnesia can open the gate to the underworld. Oh. Magnets. Fucking magnets. Brad, we're screwed! We don't know how those work! I know how they work. Don't ask think me to explain how they work. Oh. Okay. Well... Magnets, metal, I know what I need to do. The same thing you always do when you need to find metal? Yeah. Comes up a lot, have you noticed? Yeah, just shoot radar at everything. Radar the hell out of everything. Hell yeah! Radar, sonar, metal dar. Pulsar. Pulsar, yeah. So thus far, we really should have brought rope. Or a dolphin. Or a dolphin. But yeah, you generally want to bring rope when you go into temples. Or just, actually, when you're doing diving in any sort of enclosed place, you bring rope. Guide rope. It's one of the most important things, because it's very easy to get stuck in places underwater and just yep. not know where you need to go and die. That's why cave diving the, yeah. is so dangerous. Well, this is why you get the nitrogen stick. narcosis, and you're just kind of fucked. Yeah, because you can't think very well, then you breathe real heavily and go And then you super start fast talking to error. a catfish, and he doesn't answer back, because he's rude as hell. Doesn't know what you're talking about, because you got water all in your mouth. You know, from trying to breathe with the nitrogen narcosis. Great. I think the once I don't know if I ever told the story, but uh, one time when I was doing a diving refresher, um, this guy was talking about how he was diving with his wife or something, and they were deep diving. And, you know, not super deep, but you know, like seventy feet down, deep enough. Right. And apparently, his wife got nitrogen narcosis or so. Oh. Where uh, where she basically she tried taking out a regulator and giving it to a fish to try to give it some air. Oh, so that thing that I was just making up. No, yeah, it exactly happened. Tried doing that, and the guy, he just, the husband who goes over, just stuck it back into her, her mouth. And then when they went back up, she could not remember that ever happening, and she got indignant and pissed at him when he was saying that when she got to the surface. Like, I would never do that. That's stupid. That I don't remember that happening. What are you talking about? Why'd you make me come up? I was having a fun time. Maybe it was a hypno fish. Maybe. But no, that's just a thing that, you know, can happen. It does weird things to your brain. You don't necessarily know what's happening. Yeah. That's a good story. Yeah. I still I remember the same thing kind of... Didn't, didn't that same thing happen with uh, Steve Irwin, too? When, like, I no, remember a seeing Stingray it. stabbed him in the heart. No, not that. There, sh shut up. Well, when he did a deep dive on like something, I remember seeing footage of that where even he was like basically just being really weird and like the, the talking to eels and stuff. Well, he was also weird and just talked to them anyway. Yeah, it, w it wasn't that different, but it was different enough where, where everybody was like, Steve, you need to come up now. Steve, come up. Basically, deep diving is very dangerous. In fact, we're well at the depths right now that would be very dangerous for that reason. It's probably why we're also going through so much air. Well, yeah, you also deep in the game. It's a game mechanic. Yeah. Well, yeah, let's just swim deeper. Well, we gotta investigate. Though I get the feeling at this point we should probably start heading back to the surface. Probably. Or you could off yourself to Osiris. Yeah. Well, there's only one left. The last one. Yeah, you but do it, that. But, uh... I think we should go back up. That's a good... A, yeah. I th you think we can get back up with one thing of air? Yeah, if you go to the menu and hit return to boat. T teleport back to the surface. Yep. Uh, Level up your man. Well, that was exciting. 
Let's go back inside. Oh, there's so much more to see. Well, yeah. Can't wait. <laughs>